the health problem that we are trying to tackle is encapsulated in this one startling statistic. Uh, about one in every hundred Indians is blind. That's across all age groups. Across children, the problem is especially acute. The incidence of childhood blindness in India is at least three times as high as it is in the West. As if that was not tragic enough, uh, it's also remarkable that a large proportion of the children who are languishing with their blindness don't have to. They have avoidable, uh, preventable, or even treatable conditions, but very few of them actually get treated for the obvious reasons of uh, not being close to a treatment facility, not being aware that the condition is treatable, or simply not having money to get the treatment. And the consequences of this untreated childhood blindness is, is uh, distressing in the extreme. The lifespan of an Indian child who's born blind is on average 15 years shorter than that of a sighted child. And that's for the lucky ones who are making past the first few years alive. According to the WHO, fewer than half of all children who are born blind live to see their fifth birthday. Very few are educated and very few find employment as adults. This is the, the health problem that we are trying to, to address. The challenges given this problem are, how can we create a program uh, which would include funding and human resources for identifying and treating blind children? How can we improve the state of the art in treatment and rehabilitation? How can we have the program be rooted in the community that seeks to serve and have it be long lasting? So how can a basic science lab like mine make headway on these seemingly very applied uh, goals? The innovation in Prakash lies in a very key and a very simple in hindsight. Uh, realization. That realization is this, that in meeting this pressing clinical need of providing treatment to curably blind children, such as this boy, as fundamental neuroscientists, we have an incredible and an unprecedented window into the processes of brain development. So you can imagine a child who has been born blind, in whom you are able to surgically initiate sight, right from the moment the child's bandages are opened after surgery, you have a window into the process of development uh, in that child. A window that the field of neuroscience has simply not had until this point. So the innovation of our work of this project is in meshing together the basic scientific quest and the fundamental clinical mission. Uh, several years ago, we launched Project Prakash to bring together these two uh, goals. And Project Prakash uh, is organized as follows. Our medical outreach seeks to identify children uh, living in remote rural areas uh, to find those who are candidates for treatment. Uh, these children are then brought to New Delhi and provided the very best world-class uh, surgical care, followed by uh, education and rehabilitation. This is more of a nascent program, but tied to the treatment and education is our work in basic scientific research. And uh, this is truly a, a two-way interaction between medical treatment, education, and scientific uh, research. And our hope is that the outcomes would be independence and integration for the children and basic scientific advances. We are based in New Delhi, but our teams go far and wide into the country. Um, these children are then provided high quality surgical care. And then following surgery, we have the research part of, of the world. Um, here, as a very quick um, uh, vignette of what surgery does to a blind child. Here is a young child, an 11-year-old little girl by the name of Sumitra, whom you are 
watching pre-surgically. So at this point, Sumitra just has the ability to see light and dark. She's essentially blind. Um, and we've asked her to try to find a box of chocolates that we've put by the side of the hospital corridor. And of course, Sumitra uh, has a very hard time doing this. Um, that's her father in the background. But next, you will see her about a week after surgery. And you notice just what a remarkable change that surgical intervention brings about. Uh, so, so far, Project Prakash has screened uh, over 40,000 children, provided surgical care to over 500 blind children, all of whom can now see and provided non-surgical care to many more. Uh, the, the impact of Project Prakash has gone beyond just the children that we've worked with. Uh, they have been very significant outcomes, even impacting fields like autism from the research findings that have emerged from, from this work. Um, so those, were the, uh, those are ways in which we are tackling the first two challenges. But I had mentioned that an additional challenge is for us to figure out how can we have the program be rooted in the community that seeks to serve in order to give it some sense of permanency. Um, and on that front, we have recently started two satellite centers uh, in the Gorakhpur district, uh, some of the most impoverished parts of Eastern UP. We want to have a whole network of such Prakash Vision Centers in order to have the care, uh, the critical eye care uh, that's needed in these communities be available to them locally. So let me just summarize Project Prakash in uh, the about 15 years of its existence. It has provided us some fundamental insights in on the basic science front. It has given us uh, clinically relevant hypotheses about conditions like autism. It is also helping us in the design of artificial intelligence systems. It's serving as the model of an alternative paradigm that can bring together basic scientific research and societal service. And of course, it has helped in a modest way alleviate some of the challenges of childhood blindness in the country.